So today we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries coming from within our planet, and specifically discoveries in regards to very bizarre structures referred to as LLSVPs. Large, low shear velocity provinces that represent these two gigantic continent-sized blobs of material inside Earth's mantle and above its core. And although they are located thousands of kilometers below the surface, with one of the structures underneath the Pacific Ocean and the other one underneath Africa, they do seem to play a major role in a lot of geological activity on the surface, which is actually what we're discussing today. Because even though we've known about these structures since the 1980s, in this recent study researchers discovered something else by using geological records and statistical methods especially when it comes to major volcanism on planet Earth. And so let's talk about some of these more unusual discoveries in more detail, but I guess first, a little bit more about these structures and what we know about them so far. Now, first of all, once again, these are really large. They're essentially just as big as a typical continent. But surprisingly, when we actually detect seismic waves traveling through them, strangely enough, these waves don't lose a lot of energy which over the years was established to be the result of different composition. And so here this is not just some kind of a thermal anomaly or basically something that's different in temperature, it also seems to be different in composition. Which at first was extremely difficult to explain, but then over the years one hypothesis kind of started to make a bit of sense. As we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description, one of the potential explanations for their existence was that this was basically various remnants of an ancient protoplanet Thea, that collided with Earth 4.5 billion years ago, giving birth to the Moon, but also leaving behind these unusual remnants inside the mantle. Which would make this quite a remarkable discovery, suggesting there is literally a piece of another planet inside Earth. But these previous assumptions were all based on the observations of seismic waves, usually the result of some kind of a large earthquake, which then create vibrations propagating through the planet, in some sense allowing scientists to scan planet Earth directly. But the picture created here, while foundational, was somewhat incomplete. Especially here because we didn't really know if these LLSVPs were short-lived, if they were just thermal anomalies, or if there was something else entirely different about them, and if they were also moving around. And so in some of the recent studies you can find in the description, scientists decided to do something a little bit different. In one of the studies, they examined how much energy these seismic waves lose as they literally pass through these blobs at all times. This is a phenomenon referred to as damping. And so in this particular study, that should be somewhere in the description below, scientists reanalyzed a lot of the data and focused on figuring out the exact composition based on how wave velocity changed over time. And so because these waves lost very little energy, it implied that minerals inside these objects seem to be made of much larger grains. And so because the grains here were larger, maybe even pebble-sized, the energy loss was much less as well. And this also implied that some of these structures contained larger crystals. And to create these larger crystals, you have to have a very old, stable structure, because these crystals take a significant amount of time to grow. And that means that these structures have been undisturbed for billions of years. So here at least we have one confirmation in regards to their age. But this discovery does challenge one previous assumption based on geological records. The assumption that Earth's mantle is constantly changing, mixing, and reshuffling the material inside. Here though, these structures maintain their stability for a much longer time. And so they were probably not part of the general mantle convection, and were doing something slightly different. But this obviously takes us to that original question. So where did this come from? And could this really be part of Thea? And this new study you can find in the description kind of challenges this assumption. The study by James Panton you can find in the description uses computer modeling to suggest that LLSVPs seem to be chunks of Earth's oceanic crust that sunk into mantle over billions of years. This would be the result of what's known as subduction. And so this model suggests that these structures can develop naturally as a result of Earth's recent subduction history. And so in this case, no planetary collision is needed, and it actually does make a little bit more sense. Especially because it was discovered that these two structures seem to have slightly different formation histories. For example, the Pacific LLSVP seems to be much younger and contains slightly different composition, whereas the African one seems to contain older stuff and is also much better mixed. Whereas if this was a result of a collision, we might expect something much more similar, with the Pacific part being much denser and less buoyant, 
and very likely storing a lot more Oceania crust compared to the one underneath Africa. And the age for the African LLSVP has been determined to be under 300 million years old, whereas the one in the Pacific could be as old as 1.2 billion years old. And so here the suggestion is that they were born at different times and possibly from slightly different stuff. Right now this idea is now referred to as the subducted crust hypothesis. And so because they're so different, the collisional hypothesis no longer makes as much sense. And here additional piece of evidence makes even more sense because we know that the Pacific Ocean contains something referred to as the Pacific Ring of Fire. And here the Pacific LLSVP seems to contain 50% more fresh oceanic crust which is always produced in this region. And so as a result of this, the Pacific LLSVP seems to have sunk much deeper into planet Earth, whereas the African LLSVP seems to float a little bit more. With this hypothesis implying that these objects very likely started forming pretty much right after the subduction began on planet Earth. But because they have different composition and different temperature, they also affect how the heat dissipates from the Earth's core itself. And that plays a really big role on the rest of the planet. Here this potentially affects the convection in the core, which is of course responsible for the Earth's magnetic field, and it also affects how the mantle circulates around the planet. As a matter of fact, this bizarre asymmetry very likely contributes to the unusual unbalance in the Earth's magnetic field and seems to produce a lot of geological effects on the surface, which is precisely what the main focus of this new study seems to be. Annelise Cucciaro and the team you see here investigates how these unusual objects seem to influence volcanic eruptions on the surface. And that's because these enormous blobs aren't just sitting quietly, they seem to be sources of deep mantle plumes which very often result in major volcanism. Now back in 2010 there was this one study that tried to map the location of some of the major plumes which very often result in major volcanism. Especially the locations known as the super plumes which very often lead to anomalous volcanism, especially in locations where we don't expect any volcanoes. One typical example here is of course Hawaii and Iceland, but also some of the more extreme volcanic eruptions such as the Siberian Traps located in Siberia and the Deccan Traps located in India. Intriguingly both of these have been linked to extinction events. And so because these plumes are essentially like superheated chimneys of rock that rise from the core mantle boundary, when they reach the surface they eventually result in major eruptions. First they form plume heads, which produce large volcanic eruptions, and then produce plume tails that very often result in much smaller persistent volcanic activity, which is once again what Hawaii and Iceland seem to be. And so in this recent study, researchers used a new model focusing on the way mantle flows inside the planet and basically decided to rename these structures as blobs, big lower mantle basal structures. Because based on our model, the evidence suggests that these structures actually also move and specifically move around the planet in such a way that there is a direct correlation between major volcanism and the location of these blobs. And so the main conclusion in the study is a direct statistical relationship between the location of these blobs or these LLSVPs and the production of extremely large volcanic eruptions in the last 300 million years, with at least a few of these locations once again linked to major extinction events. And here is roughly what all of this would look like if we could actually see inside the planet. And so here there seems to be direct evidence that many plumes originate from inside these blobs, very often appearing above the exterior of the blobs for reasons that are still not clear. And because there is this direct relationship, it actually implies that one day we might be able to even predict where future volcanoes could appear. And so it looks like these blobs or these LLSVPs have a direct influence on a lot of volcanism on the surface and more importantly have actually influenced the evolution of life on the surface by basically causing extinctions. For example the event 250 million years ago that wiped out most of the life on the planet was possibly produced by volcanoes that started as a plume above one of these blobs. Similarly the event around the demise of dinosaurs also seems to have happened from the same source. And here the connection was confirmed using three different data sets with a lot of different volcanic locations matched directly to the location of one of these blobs. Which means that these blobs play an important role in acting as a kind of a magma highway guiding these plumes and producing volcanoes on the surface. But because in this case this work also shows that these blobs seem to move, naturally this means that all of this is very dynamic and will change with time. And interestingly here, by simulating the next billion years of evolution of these blobs, it might be possible to not just predict future volcanic eruptions, 
but it might also be possible to figure out where some of the major eruptions occurred and where certain deposits, such as for example kimberlite and diamonds, could be hiding right now. In other words, this might actually be kind of important for some of the more advanced techniques in geology and in mining. But at the same time, this could also help us map out and even use certain locations enriched in geothermal energy. Locations where we can harness the heat from the rock, creating renewable sources of energy. In this case, this could be achieved by discovering additional plumes, especially the ones that have not produced volcanoes or the ones that are hiding underneath. Interestingly, I was actually just reading a story about this, where completely by accident geologists discovered one such source in Singapore, a tiny city-state that's not even supposed to have these. And so when it comes to finding these geological anomalies, the models used in this research could become very helpful. But at the end of the day, there are still quite a lot of mysteries about these objects and quite a lot of unresolved questions. So right now, as of 2025, it does look like these were natural formations from the planet itself and were not the result of a collision, but it is quite possible that something else will be discovered in the next few years, which will change the story once again. But what's important from this recent research is that these seem to be super important for what then happens on the surface of the planet, because there is now a direct link between these structures and exceptionally powerful volcanism on the surface, which possibly finally explains why sometimes we get these enormous volcanic eruptions that basically cause extinction events. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Exciting research, but still quite a few questions. And once there are some answers, we'll come back and discuss them more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that grants you early access, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.